so here the IFA. So with Cambrius, right? Yes. So what is the latest here? Well, uh, let me briefly describe what Cambrius does uh, so that your viewers uh, will acquaint themselves with uh, our company and the product and so on. And then we'll talk about some cool stuff. So Cambrius makes silver nanowire inks. So it comes in bottles like this. This is a smaller uh, bottle, uh, but obviously in mass production, we'll ship them in much larger uh, bottles. So this ink is coated on sheets of film in a roll-to-roll -roll process. You can also use uh, sheet process, other process, but we can do roll-to-roll -roll coating to make uh, touch sensors, for example. You can also use the same material for OLED lighting. You can use them for uh, uh, photovoltaic cells and so on and so forth. I'll give you some examples. So how, many, how many phones can you make with this one? Um, um, like literally hundreds or thousands with uh, very little. A little bottle, ink. I guess. Yeah. And you and see bigger ones, bigger bottles. Absolutely. And also, it depends on the concentration and the uh, sheet resistance of so the material. So, who do you ship this to? Uh, Are there we, companies like Lipton sure. here? So, we, Cambrios, makes the, make the ink and then we ship them to filmmakers. Uh, I've given you some examples here Okura and Hitachi and so on in Japan. We also ship to customers in uh, Korea and China and so on. And they would take this film material and supply them to sensor makers who will make the touch sensors and that will go to the OEMs that uh, adapt these touch sensors into different products. I will give you, I'll show you examples of uh, the film as well as um, a touch sensor. So here's an example of a film. Uh, it's um, a PET film with uh, the Cambrio silver nanowire coated on it. The advantage of our material is that you will not see a pattern, okay? unlike competing technology where there's pattern visibility. There's no pattern visibility here. And uh, the transmission is excellent. Uh, basically, you're looking at me through uh, our material. So you can see that the material is very, very transparent compared to the incumbent technology, ITO, and other technologies. And also, it is uh, flexible. So when you make, uh, when you take two of these and put them together, you'll basically form a sensor material and when these two are laminated together you have a sensor and um, these sensors are very rugged uh, because they're very thin they are um, uh, very light and you can make a touch sensor that kind of looks like this you look at this touch sensor it's flexible and uh, both of those uh, uh, films are laminated together and you have a projected capacitance touch sensor with silver nanowire material in it now, we can also coat this material into, um, um, on glass. Um, here's an example of a cover glass that has the films, um, the PET films with our material in it um, laminated. So this cover glass would go into like a laptop type uh, product. This is a full touch sensor and it also has the chips that drive it and uh, the flexible connector and so on. This is a full touch sensor that will go on an end product. And the end product, I have brought some examples. Just to connect to this particular end product, let me also show you this sensor. Uh, here's another touch sensor uh, that has our silver nanowire material. You can again see there is no pattern visibility and um, it's very, very transparent, and um, uh, this would go into a phone. Is it the best transparency, the best? Uh, Absolutely. In uh, the whole market? It is, it is the most transparent. This is the best technology in the market today, which is why it is in mass production compared to other technologies which are mostly in the lab or in prototype stage. But when you show these, these sheets, uh, there was reflections from lights and stuff. Is that something to do with something that can be changed somehow if you do matte or? What, what is this reflections that can be seen? Sometimes? Sure. So um, uh, most of these materials, whether they're film or glass, will reflect light. And there are coatings that can be done to minimize that. Uh, but our material uh, by itself does not, uh, uh, it, it does not matter whether they put the coating or not. Our material can go um, beneath the uh, uh, cover glass, which could be glass or plastic. Okay. So let me show you, um, so having given this uh, background, uh, these film suppliers supply the material to the sensor makers, and you can see examples of some sensor makers. So these are pretty big, right? Uh, uh, Hitachi. Absolutely. LG, last time we saw an LG uh, device, right? Yes, you saw the LG all-in-one uh, computer as well as a 23-inch monitor uh, when you last uh, filmed the product, and, and that is in mass production. Oh, investors also in Cambrius. Correct. 
Uh, some of these companies are investors. And the Hitachi? Uh, Hitachi is one of our customers that is building a very large factory, and they announced this factory that will come online um, in the fourth quarter of this year. And if you uh, search uh, Camrios, you also see Samsung as an investor? Samsung is an investor in our company, for sure. And uh, we also have uh, uh, other investors and uh, partners. So in this list, you can see some of the sensor makers. Uh, you are, we already talked about LG. Uh, Nisha Printing is our customer, uh, and uh, um, they make um, touch sensors for a number of high-end. For big uh, brands, right? For very big brands. And then uh, we've- TPK uh, is the biggest in the world? TPK is the biggest uh, touch sensor company in the world. And two weeks ago, they announced that they will be using the Cambrios um, silver nanowires into their products as well, mostly mobile products, uh, mobile phones, uh, tablets, and so on and so forth. So TPK is huge. They sensor are, maker. They are a very large sensor maker for sure. All right. So how soon does that partnership get to products? So they announced that they will be sampling material in the, the fourth quarter, and then production will follow that. Is it something that can be happen quickly, or does it have to take years and years and years and years? So we've been working with all of these customers for a long time. Cambrios itself has been um, researching and developing these products for many years, almost 10 years. So the product is ready now. In the last year or so, we've been in mass production. We are expanding capacity. We are um, increasing um, our capacity uh, to the extent where next year, theoretically, we could make uh, enough silver nanowires to quote every single touch sensor for smartphones worldwide, like a billion of them. Really? Uh, yes, that's how, in, how much capacity we build. Factory making this product, which yeah. is just one place in the world, right? Yeah. You could make enough of this product to cover every smartphone in the world next year. Already. Correct, correct. Uh, and obviously, we will be not just in smartphones, we will be in tablets, we will be in notebooks, we will be in monitors and all kinds of different devices. Can um, we see the, the competing technologies, and can you try to explain why uh, uh, Cambrius Clearum is for sure going to be the winner? So some of the competing technologies are uh, metal mesh, carbon nanotubes and nanobuds, uh, conducting polymers uh, like PE dot, um, graphene and so on. So compared to these uh, different technologies, we are superior because we have certain advantages uh, compared to each one of these. And I will explain uh, some of the primary advantages. So in this graph here, you want to be to the left and to the top where it shows transmission, uh, the more transmission the better, right? As well as sheet resistance, the so lower resistance uh, gives you better um, performance. So uh, for the all-in-one notebook uh, type products, you need to be right here. Today there are only a couple of technologies that even um, get into space with film-based um, uh, touch sensors. And, this, uh, that would, and we beat all other technologies, whether they are uh, uh, P dot, carbon nanobuds, graphene, and so on and so forth. Um, is it true that metal mesh is not far? Or? Metal mesh does have very good performance from a transmission perspective, but metal mesh has other issues with uh, pattern visibility and more A, and um, that's why we are winning a lot of these designs where uh, customers... Uh, is, can we see it, uh, the screen where you show the competitors again? Uh, the, all these... This, this is all the com companies competing right now? Sure. So this was a uh, slide that was created by Lux Research, and they examined all these different companies that are competing in the transparent conductor space. And um, for their research, uh, Cambrios is uh, in this dominant category, both in terms of business execution as well as the technical value based on uh, our product, its features, the uh, IP, and so on and so forth. So all these companies, are they all in the Silicon Valley or? Uh, no, they're worldwide. And uh, uh, these companies include companies that are in-kind competitors who make other silver nanowire. Uh, most of their technologies, um, the performance is not um, uh, anywhere near uh, what Cambrios is able to perform. And uh, uh, metal mesh companies are also listed there. And I mentioned uh, the, some of the hurdles they're facing. Which one is metal mesh, for example? Um, some of the companies in the metal mesh space will include like Unipixel, and uh, they will also include um, a Poly IC and so on and so forth. Um, and then there are companies that make 
Is um, it carbon nanowire? Car one? Uh, carbon nanotubes Is, which and one carbon that? nanobuds. Uh, you can see there are uh, some of these companies right here are all uh, carbon nanotube and uh, graphene. Uh, producers and so, uh, so for sure your technology is better than carbon nanotubes well the proof is in uh, uh, customer products being launched so we have a number of customer products that are already launched you can um, uh, so across the street from our office in um, uh, California um, there is the Fry's store you can actually go there and buy a monitor that has the Cambrios uh, silver nanowire in a uh, tw uh, 23 inch monitor Similarly, um, there have been a number of devices that have been uh, commercialized, whether they are 15-inch kiosks, they are uh, mobile phones, and so on and so forth. In the next few months, we will announce several more products that uh, span different categories of applications as well. Nice. So it's definitely better, uh, and it's... Is it cheaper? Yeah. So the cost... We ha also have a cost advantage compared to ITO. And, uh, um, most of the reasons why we are chosen as a technology is because the transmission is better uh, in uh, uh, larger monitors and uh, all-in-one computers. We're about 40% lighter than glass-based um, uh, touch sensors. We're about 40% thinner, so it makes it much lighter. Uh, and obviously, you know, less material means it's more rugged as well and makes the uh, end device much more sleek looking and the designs look better. Uh, Performance-wise, we beat uh, pretty much most of the competition. Cost-wise, we are very competitive. In many cases, we are uh, less cost uh, compared to the incumbent uh, ITO technology. And you're kind of the only uh, uh, solution for flexible? Yeah. For, for real going to work? Or? Yeah. Thank you for bringing that up because flexible displays is the next uh, generation of, for, uh, of products that are expected in the display space. Um, for both OLED flexible as well as e-paper flexible or any other flexible technology, our material will lend itself very well because our material in a touch sensor is already flexible. I have a flexible touch sensor here. And we have studies that were conducted by our customers where they... Um, essentially used our material as uh, one of the electrodes in a display and they rolled and unrolled this display. This is a rollable display, about a hundred thousand times and uh, we survived that. The incumbent ITO technology is brittle and uh, therefore it will break in such an application. All right, so uh, all these filmmakers and sensor makers could be working on a whole bunch of flexible stuff. Absolutely. So. Uh, as they develop these products, we are already ready. Our technology is already ready for um, uh, touch screens. So we can uh, put touch screens on, uh, uh, on film that is laminated to a rigid uh, cover glass, or we can put touch screens on flexible so, uh, on films like these, and they can, we can make touch screens that are uh, entirely made of uh, flexible materials. Flexible LCD is okay? Flexible LCD is fine too. The LCD doesn't leak if it's flexible or something? Like it doesn't make like a... Usually what the LCD people do is they'll seal inside so that the liquid crystal material will not come out. And it doesn't matter that it's flexible. For LCD, it'll just work. Well, so far most of the traction is in e-paper and OLEDs because uh, to make uh, a flexible LCD is much more difficult because they have to maintain a certain gap between uh, uh, in the cell, in the liquid crystal cell, and you change that gap, it changes the properties of the display, which is why you're not seeing a lot of uh, so it's harder flexible. To do flexible. It's much harder LCD. to do with LCD. Much harder. Yes. But there will be flexible uh, LCD. There are certain types of LCD that could potentially um, get into flexible in the future. Like for wearable computers, or what should it be? Some it's special LCDs. Uh, for most of the flexible uh, displays, whether they are OLEDs, whether they are um, uh, e-paper and so on and so forth, are targeting mobile applications where they have some unique designs um, and also they're much more rugged. So one of the advantages with these flexible material is uh, th they don't break, right? There is no glass to shatter. Uh, and also uh, the other advantage in larger products where you have flexible is not really the flexing aspect of the material, but they're lighter and they're thinner. So you can make much more sleeker designs. For example, you take a tablet and imagine you have a flexible display and a flexible touch screen, it's going to be a lot lighter and uh, it won't break. And you could use LCD without it actually flexing but just being lighter. Correct. Uh, today you can put a flexible touch screen like this on an LCD which is rigid 
And uh, uh, the advantage there is uh, even though the LG LCD is made of glass, um, the entire device will be lighter and uh, uh, we'll have much better transparency. So therefore, um, you'll either save on battery or you'll, uh, the display will appear brighter and uh, uh, also it'll be a lot more rugged. But can it be like uh, the Gorilla Glass stuff? Where yeah. it gets unscratchable and all that stuff. Yeah, so the Gorilla Glass will go on the top and our material will go beneath that. And uh, But it has to be glass if it's Gorilla Glass. There's no Gorilla Plastic. Correct, correct. Okay. All right, so thanks a lot for this latest uh, overview. Thank and you so funny much. It's that you were saying that the, the, the floor here looks like uh, silver nanowires. <laughs> yes, uh, obviously we wouldn't uh, have that many silver nanowires because uh, uh, there's a lot of it. Uh, but uh, uh, our silver nanowires will actually look something like this. Um, this is the uh, plan view and here's your 70 degree tilt of the, you can see the actual silver nanowires here. Um, this is what it'll look like. It doesn't occupy the entire uh, surface um, of the screen and uh, um, it occupies very little area and that's why it's uh, very transmissive. And it's positioned kind of like randomly? And it's positioned can... randomly, that's why you don't have pattern visibility that you see in metal mesh and some of the other technologies. But you have technology to measure and stuff? And all Correct. That. We can uh, pattern this uh, using either traditional process, whether photolith or others. Uh, we can also laser pattern uh, our material. So you have lasers shooting into the system and patterning? Yeah. And the, uh, we have the advantage that you can use a room temperature laser um, um, to pattern our material. And that gives you a very good uh, uh, sensor with very, uh, you, you cannot see the pattern as well as you can hide throughput. And you can pattern with lasers fast enough to make all a billion phones per year? <laughs> Easily, yes. you have yes. to pattern in your factory? Uh, no, we would not do the patterning ourselves. Sure. This will be done by our customers. The film people or the sensor people? Um, Either of them can do that. The f a film company could potentially pattern and sell a pattern film, or um, the sensor company could essentially do the patterning as well. So how soon do you think there will be like uh, hundreds of millions of flexible phones? Uh, it's pretty hard for me to predict. I've been predicting flexible displays for a long time and I have not been quite right. Uh, but uh, you know, like, uh, you know, you're a fan of flexible technology as well. We would love for that technology to happen. But so, so far as Cambridge- you cannot say. It's hard to say. Okay. Well, in some ways, you can say there are smaller type devices with flexible screens that are already in the market. You've seen prototypes, and you're also hearing about uh, flexible displays, whether they are on phones, on TVs, and things like that that are coming. But uh, we are ready. Uh, Cambrios's material uh, is uh, very well suited for flexible touch screens or flexible OLED displays or others, and uh, we are ready to uh, go to market. And also the non-flexible, everything. Non-flexible as well.